Paris, Paris, the magic name sings out on the lips of the world in the sounds of the old city itself as it moves through the centuries of history. Paris, city of light, life, and confusion. Taxis, trucks, cars, and the tree-lined avenues. Cobblestone streets, and the Frenchman on his bicycle. The Parisian, beret clamped on his head, lips gripping a cigarette. This is Paris. Almost endless streams of traffic. French cars, German cars, American cars, honking their way through the hub of the city. And people, all kinds of people, gather in the ageless city, soaking up the sun and trading tales of distant places. And Paris is something else. It's the Seine River with its gently flowing water, its barges and bridges lacing together the sprawling segments. The steps up from the river's edge are a part of every man's dream of Parisian life. Parisian life the goal of men through the centuries, where a simple walk up the stairs becomes an act of enchantment, where a walk down the tree-lined avenues brings back the dreams of childhood. Here, in the whispers of the wind through the trees, one hears the song of Paris. The song of Paris enfolds the halls of the Louvre. Begun as a fortress by Philip Augustus in the year 1204, it became a museum of art in 1791, after the beginning of the revolution. Surrounded by beautiful gardens and lawns, the Louvre, with its 16 miles of galleries, holds many of modern civilization's treasures of art. Familiar to practically every traveler in Paris is the American Express Office. A touch of the new world in the midst of the old, it is a contact with home for the stranger. The old city is laced together by the web of the Underground Railway, or Metro as it's called in Paris. And what may one expect to hop up from beneath the Boulevard de Cap du Cine? A Parisian model, perhaps, en route to Madame Scaparelli's. Or a housewife from Neuilly who got off at the wrong station. Or a lady from Montmartre with something on her mind all disappear into the throngs threading their way along the streets of Paris. This too is the song of Paris, the song of many tongues, the song of many lands, mingled with the sounds of traffic. Sometimes the sights along the Rue de la Paix are nearly identical with those along Main Street home. Working girls shopping during lunch hour. All the baubles for which Paris is famous are on display. Furs, fabrics, and perfume. And even doll shops arrest the attention along the Rue de Rivoli with dolls dressed in the costumes of peoples of many countries. The song of Paris sings of the flower vendor with her gay blooms, fresh from the rural districts of France. Flowers for Madame? Or perhaps an original creation from the famous salons of the Parisian designers. Happy ladies emerge with empty pocketed men close behind. A harrowing experience is the attempt to cross the street at the Place de la Concorde, known today as the world's loveliest square. And yet, at this spot, more than 3,000 people lost their heads to the guillotine during the revolution. Beginning at the Place de la Concorde is the Avenue de Champs-Élysées, with a magnificent arch of triumph at its terminus. What an unforgettable experience, the cab trip up the Champs-Élysées as we bounce along the cobblestone street.
And finally, the Arch of Triumph itself. Napoleon planned it as a memorial to Napoleon, but it has stood as a symbol of victory for good man and tyrant alike. Paris has its share of monumental statues, typical of most European cities. The monument to Marshal Foch faces the Palace of Chaillot, standing guard over the thousands who promenade along the Chaillot grounds. Works of prominent sculptors are liberally scattered along the Parisian landscape, where lovers of art can enjoy these great works as a part of their everyday life. One of the greatest symbols of any city in the world is the graceful tower built by Alexander Eiffel in 1889. The Eiffel Tower so intrigued the world that it has become the hallmark for the city. The stiff-necked visitor finds it even bigger than he thought it was. Its four giant legs thrust the tower skyward, dwarfing the surrounding architecture. Above the trees, the steel girders converge in lace-like patterns, webs of support against the strength of the elements. Stabbing the sky with a mast-like pinnacle, bristling with television antennas. Beneath the metal giant mingle the thousands of people who come from the four corners of the globe while above, the loaded elevators slowly inch their way through the open shaft framework of the massive girders, making their way to the top of the tower. A few hardy visitors elect to climb the more than 1,800 steps which eventually lead to the top. But for the most, the elevator is the means to one of the most memorable trips of a lifetime to the summit, more than 980 feet above Paris. A sign at the elevator entrance advertises the wonders of the tower trip and diagrams the three main levels of the tower itself. The lower, or first level, contains two spacious restaurants and a great open-air dining area. The second level has a smaller restaurant, souvenir shops, and restrooms. And at the very top level, a snack bar, souvenir counter, and post office. Armed with tickets, we watch the big two-story high elevator come down to get us. And the ascent is begun. Slowly, at first, we climb the outstretched leg of the giant. From the first level, people below us are but dots on the landscape. And from the fabulous Tower Restaurant, we look out to Paris as we enjoy our meal. Then back again to the journey upward. Higher and higher we climb as the giant steel girders seem to slide past us. At the second level, we change cars and continue our breathtaking climb to the top.
And finally, from the peak of steel, Paris, the ageless city spread out beneath us, the arch of triumph dominating the scene. From another vantage point, the palace of Chaillot, spotlighted by the sun as it peeps through the clouds hanging low over the city. We see the rising slopes of the Montmartre section, capped by the gleaming towers of the Church of the Sacré-Cœur. This is Paris. This is the song of the city. It is a song of reverence, typified by this magnificent church atop the hill. The Sacré-Cœur was consecrated in 1891, and from that day has taken its place with the wondrous sights of Paris. And so it is as we see Paris today, a great sprawling metropolis housing many of the cultural treasures of the modern world. Yes, Paris is many things. Its historic old Notre Dame Cathedral, dating from the year 1160 AD. Paris is Maxime's eating place for world celebrities. Or the famous Madeleine Church in the heart of the city. Paris is the Parisian himself, enhancing his verbal eloquence with the characteristic gesture. The gendarme with his natty cape and well-tailored uniform. Paris is the sidewalk cafe and the tourist. It's the dressmaker in the window. The countless memorials, statues, and the French language. Paris is the cobblestone walks along the banks of the Seine, echoing the footsteps of hundreds of years. Paris is itself, buildings, people, and a way of life. Paris, the ageless city.